This is lesson 6.3, Exponential Functions. You should be on page 306. In this lesson, you will learn how to identify and evaluate exponential functions, how to graph an exponential function, and how to solve real-life problems involving exponential functions. So first of all, we have to learn what is an exponential function. An exponential function is a nonlinear function in the form y equals a times b raised to the x power, where a can't be 0, b can't be 1, and b is a positive number. So when I read that, at least when I was your age, I would have been like, I have no clue what that's saying. So let's make sure we explain what that is. Let's review, first of all, that in first semester you learned about linear equations and functions. Linear were straight line graphs, and the most common form of a linear function or equation would be slope-intercept form. Here's what this is saying, a couple key things. Exponential functions are not straight. Do you notice how it says it's nonlinear? That means it's not straight. And the form of an exponential equation or function would look like this. So, when you see slope-intercept form in your mind, you ought to be thinking right away, wow, that's a straight line. When you see y equals, let me just make something up, some number times some number raised to the x power, like let's put y equals 3 times 2 to the x power. As soon as I see that, I'm like, that's not linear, that's exponential, that's going to be a curved graph. I'll show you what the graphs look like here in a bit. The next thing. As the independent variable changes by a constant amount, the dependent variable is multiplied by a constant factor, which means consecutive y values form a constant ratio. So again, if you're like, what the heck did he just say? Here's the key thing. Multiplied. Okay? A linear table is when you have a constant addition or subtraction pattern. But when you have a exponential table, you would have a constant multiplication pattern for y. Okay, so if I see a constant multiplication pattern for y, but an addition pattern for x, that's telling me I have an exponential table. So let's look at these examples. Does each table represent a linear or exponential function? Well, if you look at the first table, I have an addition pattern for x. See that here? I have an addition pattern for y. That means this is definitely a linear table. We ought to be able to write the equation for that, too. Let's do that. y would equal, I've got to figure out my slope and my y-intercept. My y-intercept is 2, and my slope, you notice how I'm going up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1, up 2 over 1. My slope is 2. The equation would be y equals 2x plus 2 for that table. Okay? Here, let's look at this one. I have an addition pattern for x, but I have a multiplication pattern for y. This is definitely an exponential table. It's easy to write an equation for this too. Okay? Here's the form. We just talked about the form a couple minutes ago. Now, this number b is what we're multiplying by each time. Do you notice how we're multiplying by 2 every time? So b is 2. A is the y-intercept of the graph, and in this case, that would be 4. So that would be the equation for that table, y equals 4 times 2 to the x power. They will also ask you to evaluate exponential functions. This is easy. You can use your calculator for this. Evaluate each function for the given value of x. Let's do this one over here. Let's type that in our calculator together. You know, I hate seeing people get it wrong just because it's not typed in right. So I'm going to type in um, 3 times, I'll use parentheses, 0 0.5, close parentheses, raised to the, I'm going to put parentheses again, negative 2 power. And according to the book, I ought to be getting 12, and that's what I'm getting here. So the little caret key, this little key here that I'm pointing to, that's the key that you use to raise something to a power. And you can see I noted that here. 
why don't you pause the video real quick and you try questions one through four. Okay, and I'm back. So for number one, this is definitely an exponential table. We have a multiplication pattern of half. We're multiplying by half or y. Now, it didn't ask you to write the equation, but I did. The y-intercept's an 8, and we're multiplying by half every time. And then the second table's linear. We're adding 4 for x, and we're taking away 1 for y. That's a linear pattern. So if we're going down 1 over 4, the slope's negative quarter, and you can see the y-intercept's a 0, so there's your equation. They didn't ask for the equation, but I think that's something we're going to need to know. And then for 3 and 4, here are the answers when you plug in negative 2, 0, and half, respectively. If you plug in negative 2, you get 281st. If you plug in 0, you're going to get 2. And if you plug in a half, you're going to get 6. And then here are the answers for 4. Let's talk about graphing exponential functions. You will be allowed to use your calculator to help you graph these. Now, this wording sounds complicated, so I'm going to show you a picture of what this is trying to say. The graph of an exponential function, and there's an exponential function, so that form, is always going to look like the following. It's going to look like, here's the main picture here, okay? If B is a number larger than 1 and A is positive, a lot of your problems will be of that form. You're going to see a problem starting near 0, near the x-axis, and it's going to continually rise. Now, if you look here, you notice these are the same except for right here. Now, here it says B is bigger than 1. If B is a number between 0 and 1, it's going to look similar, but it's going to be in the reverse direction. We're going to start high and then rapidly decline, and then just keep on getting closer and closer to the x-axis without touching it. Now, you look at these two down here. You notice I want you to compare these two. Here's the only difference, and here we get back into transformations again. I'm going to use a highlighter to highlight the difference. Do you notice the only difference is here? In this picture, A would be negative versus A positive. If A is negative, it's going to reflect your graph. So this is a vertical reflection when that happens, okay? So it'll be the same picture, just flipped, and then same thing here. When A is negative, it's going to take this picture and flip it. So if B is a number between 0 and 1, we're either going to start high and finish toward the x-axis or start far away from the x-axis, finish close to it. It just, if A is positive, it's going to be above the x-axis. If A is negative, the picture would be below. So that's what exponential functions always look like. Any problem of that format, when you look at the equation, oops, of this format, any one of the, this, any problem of this format will create one of these four pictures. So when they ask you to graph something like this, you can simply put it in your calculator, make the table, Okay, so let's do that real quick. We're going to put y equals 4 times 2 to the x power in our calculator. So we have y equals 4 parentheses 2 raised to the x power. Okay, let me make my table. I want you to compare that table to what you see in the book. And you notice, just like the book says, um, Negative 2 for x is giving you 1 for y. Negative 1 for x is giving you 2 for y, and so on. So this table is matching what you see right here in the book, which should allow you to graph that. Okay, so you can just plot the points, and you can see, here's a picture of it in the book. You create a graph that starts low and then crosses the y-axis and then zooms upward. It's exponential. It's exponential reminds me x exponential. It's kind of like explode. Okay, the graph explodes upward. So it's going to start low, cross the y-axis, and suddenly take off upward. Okay? Now the next thing, compare the graph to the graph of the parent function. Now, the parent function would just be this. So what is this times 4 doing? Well, it's vertically stretching the graph. Okay? 
So when they ask you to compare, that's what's going on between the two. This graph is vertically stretched by a factor of four. And you can see vertical stretch by a factor of four. Okay? And then what's the domain and range? The domain, that's the x values. This graph can have any x values. It starts as far left as I want. It will go as far right as I want. So the domain would be all reals. And now let's get our range. Our range, you notice this graph is always in the positives for y. Always in the positives. So the range would be y is greater than 0. And I'm not going to go through this whole second sample problem, but you notice in this sample, you notice how the B values in between 0 and 1? So remember on my previous slide, I said when that happens, oop, I'm going in the wrong direction here, I'm going to get this picture. I'm going to get this picture right here, and that's what's going on in the book. You can see it. I'm starting high and then finishing low. That's what that picture does. Now the negative in front is going to reflect this graph over the x-axis. You can see it's a reflection. All right. And then the domain, here's the graph um, f of x. They wanted me to list the domain and range of this graph. Well, the domain is all reals. And now the range. You notice how all these values are less than 0 for y. So the range is y is less than 0. Why don't you try number 5? You can use your calculator. I want you to graph this. That's the first thing. Then I want you to compare this graph to the parent function. Now the parent function would just be y equals 4 raised to the x power. And then I want you to tell me the domain and range. Go ahead and do that. Okay, I'm back. So first of all, I wanted to graph this, so I took my calculator, made a table, and there were a few points I was able to get on here pretty easy. One, negative half, zero, negative two, and one, negative eight. So here would be a picture of my graph. Now, do you notice my A value is negative, and my B value is greater than one, which means it's the top right picture um, that I drew in my four picture page a few pages ago, which is this look. Okay? Now this graph is vertically reflected and stretched by a magnitude of two. I can tell that right here. That number tells me the negative means I'm flipping my, my graph over and the two is I'm stretching it out from the parent function. And then my domain, x could be all reals. y, you notice all my y values is less than zero. Now the book says to graph functions of this form, begin by graphing the parent function, then translate. I'm not going to have you, like the graphing part, I would let you do this on a calculator if I wanted you to just graph this. Here's what I'm going to more focus on, like when I give you quizzes or tests. I'm not going to make you plot points and graph, but what I'm going to ask is what are these two things doing to the graph of y equals 4 times 2 to the x power. These are transformations. So we're going to focus on the transformations. This gets us back to topics that we did in chapter 4. You know, the, the stretching and shrinking, the shifting, translations left and right, and so on. So remember, if it's outside, this is vertical. So this is telling me to take this graph and move it up to and inside, that's horizontal. Now remember, horizontal is backwards from what you see. So when I see minus 3, this would mean right 3. Okay, so you notice they have a picture. Here's the picture of the graph 4 times 2 raised to the x power. And my new graph, look at these points. This point has been moved 1, 2, 3 right, and then 2 up. And this point got moved 1, 2, 3 right, and 2 up. My transformation that this is telling me is 3 right, 2 up. That's what I would focus on. Like if on a quiz, this would be great mumble choice quiz, quiz and test questions. All right, I'm asking you, what, what does this, what transformation is this showing me? It's 3 right, 2 up, okay? They will have you compare exponential functions. So the wording is important. An exponential function G models a relationship in which the dependent variable, that's y, y is multiplied by one and a half.
for every one unit, the x value increases. Graph g when g of 0 equals 4. Now remember, that means we have the point 0, 4. So you notice in the table they have the point 0 for x, 4 for y. Now, here's what that previous sentence says. If we increase x by 1, we're supposed to multiply y by 1 and a half. So 4 times 1 and a half is 6. If you increase this by 1 and you multiply here by 1 and a half, you get 6 times 1 and a half is 9. So the pattern here is multiply, adding 1 to x, multiplying by 1 and a half. Now, how do you work backward? Well, I have to take away 1, and I've got to divide by 1 and a half then from 4. So let me do that. 4 divided by 1 and a half. I'm just doing it at my calculator here at my desk. That gets me 2.7. Now I can plot those points, and I can draw a smooth curve through the points. Okay? So that's how we can compare an exponential function. They'll have questions like this verbal in the book work that they'll want you to be able to read this and make a quick graph. I would like you to take a minute. Now, don't follow the directions here. I don't want you to graph. I just want you to describe the transformation that these things are saying to me to these functions. Okay? I'm not even going to make you to describe the domain and range right now. I just want you to describe the transformation. Okay, I'm back. So for this first one, this is telling us I should take the graph of y equals negative 2 times 3 to the x power. This is going to shift my graph 2 left, 1 down. Okay? Now over here, this is going to take the graph of f of x equals 1 quarter raised to the x power, and this is going to shift the graph three units up because we have that plus three, okay? We can use the information we've learned about exponential functions in this lesson to solve real life problems. Now what they do here is repeat what I've already taught you. Here's an exponential table. The equation for this would be my b value is here. It's five. And my a value is the y-intercept. A is 2. So the equation for this table, it's definitely exponential, would be y equals 2 times 5 raised to the x power. Okay? So when you look at it, like for here, modeling a bacteria population, the graph represents a bacteria population y after x days. Write an exponential function that represents the population. So you notice they have these ordered pairs listed. I'm going to circle them. So if we take those and write those in a table, it's easy to see the pattern. Do you notice how we're adding 1 for x and multiplying y by 4? Okay, well then it should be easy to write an equation. This is definitely exponential. We have a multiplication pattern. b is 4. My y-intercept is 3, so a equals 3. So my equation should be y equals 3 times 4 raised to the x power, which you see here. Okay. Now, find the population after 12 hours and 5 days. Now, 12 hours is a half a day. So if I want to find the population, I could plug in one half for my x in my equation. So you notice they're doing that here. They plugged in half for x, put it in their calculator, they get 6. If you want to find the population after 5 days, take 5 and plug it in for x. So you can see they're doing that, that here. 3 times 4 raised to the fifth power you should be getting 3,072. I'm going to pause the video here. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.